Now, there we go. All right, hello everybody. Um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about platform teams today, so I wanna establish first what I'm talking about when I talk about platform teams. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's really natural, the evolution of platform teams in many of our organizations, uh, and it's come as a result of building over time what's often referred to as a you build it, you run it culture, you know, went through the migration of DevOps, and now engineers build software and they operate that software. And one of the things that happened in that transition is we massively increased the cognitive load of most of our software teams, our product teams, right? We said, cool, I know you think you're great at writing software, but you should also be great at, you know, operating systems and understanding databases and, you know, you're gonna be on call now. And so that seemed like a lot. So what we did was we created platform teams to sort of start to reduce what those product teams need to understand. And what the platform teams did was deploy Kubernetes and say, cool, now I also need you to understand Kubernetes, which was not particularly helpful to most of those product teams. So I'm Rob Zuber, CTO of CircleCI, and I want to talk a little bit about how I think platform teams need to evolve to truly support the product teams that they are meant to support in their organizations. And I think of this in three parts. First of all, know what it means to be building great product. You might be called a platform team, but you're building a product for other engineers in your organization. Second, you want to create winning conditions. Understand your organizational environment and create the environment that's going to allow you to succeed as a platform team. And then third, build a partnership. You are working with product teams in order to make the whole company successful, and if you're not working together to do that, uh, well, you're gonna have problems. So what am I talking about when I talk about building great product? Uh, the good news is there are lots of resources out there, there's lots of people that can help you think about building great product, and it turns out most of your organizations probably think about building great product in terms of what you build for your end customer. So I wanna pull from a few of my favorite resources on product thinking. Uh, first of all, if you're not familiar with Melissa Perry, author of Escaping the Build Trap, she describes the build trap as organizations becoming stuck in measuring their success by outputs rather than outcomes. Meaning, teams believe that their job is to build stuff, not to solve customer problems. And I think what we've experienced, and depending on what organization you work in, what you've probably experienced, is if you're not solving the problems of your customer, your business is failing. We need to apply that same kind of thinking to platform teams and the problems that they are trying to solve. Pulling from another one of my favorites, Marty Kagan. This is from his book, Inspired. He talks about two tracks of product delivery. First, discovery where we figure out what the problem is that we're trying to solve and how we could go about solving it, and we assess the potential and the risk associated with solving that problem, and then delivery, where we build the thing with continued feedback and evolution to solve the problem that we've discovered we need to solve. Now, again, really strong product organizations have figured this out, but in the world of platform, I think we're still just building stuff and throwing it at engineers and assuming that they'll use it. And last, another of my favorites in terms of uh, software discovery and delivery, or product discovery and delivery from Continuous Discovery Habits. Uh, one of the things that Teresa Torres talks about is at a minimum, weekly touch points with your customers. Meaning you should be on a product team talking to an outside customer at least once a week. Because if you're not, you're not getting the feedback about what you're doing that allows you to ensure you're on the right track, focus your energy on building and solving for the right problems. Those touch points can be really small, the research can be really small, it can be very lightweight, it can be automated, it can be lots of things, but you need to be getting that feedback very regularly. Now the great thing about being on a platform team is your customer is probably in the building. You may not be in an actual building, but at least in the metaphorical building, meaning you have access to them in Slack, you probably know them, you may see them in the lunchroom. If you still have a lunchroom, you see them on Zoom calls. It's not hard to get to them. One of the great challenges of many product teams is they have to find a way to get access to their customers and motivate them to give feedback. Your customer might be sitting at the next desk. So this should be a very, very easy problem to solve for most platform teams. 
Okay, so now you're thinking about product in a product way. How do you change or adapt to the needs of your organization in a way that allows you to really deliver effectively? Now, one of the conditions that I think is a anti-pattern in most platform teams is the mandate. And uh, I'll credit Frank Slootman for the comment that if you want to understand how people behave without outside pressure, just go to your local DMV. I will say to the California DMV credits improved a lot over the last few years, but if you force everyone in the organization to adopt whatever a platform team is going to build, the platform team will build whatever they feel like building. That's not the goal. You are trying to solve the problems of your organization, of your product teams. And if you allow that mandate to influence your work, first of all, you'll probably go off on an 18-month expedition to build whatever it is that you're going to build without solving any problems along the way. And second, when you've built it, it will solve no customer problems, but you will force people to adopt it. C point A, here's Kubernetes, please understand that as well, which has not taken away any of the problems of the actual product team. So we talk a lot about uh, paved roads. I think when we talk about platforms and internal, uh, internal platforms in particular, and the thing that I would highlight, again, sort of against the mandate, is that you need some competition. And one of the interesting things about having your customer be a fellow engineer is it's a little bit like you know, opening a restaurant for chefs. If they don't like the food, they'll just make it themselves, right? You need to perform at a very high level. And most software engineers, unfortunately to their probably discredit, believe that they can do better themselves. And what so then what happens is you have sprawl and overhead and challenges in the organization. But if you are truly building something that doesn't solve their problems, they will solve it for themselves and they will force you to do better. So again, the mandate allows you to drift into this, I can just do whatever I want and assume that I'm solving the problems of my customers. Whereas having competition, even if it's that internal competition, is actually good for you and is going to push you to try harder, to think harder, to truly solve those problems. And I think that shift in thinking is what really matters. I would also say that competition might be external you might be able to take a product off the shelf and solve the problem of your teams. And that's fantastic because then you can apply your energy to the next problem instead of, again, believing that your job is to build things and that if you haven't built something, you haven't solved problems. So let's talk about what you do need in the organization. And I would say if you're, if you're in a platform team or you are an exec or leader that's creating a platform team, there is a limited amount of sort of executive support and social capital that you can lend to that. You can burn it on mandates, or you can apply it to what I think is the most challenging organizational problem around this, which is that product teams and platform teams need to have shared goals. As a platform team, your job is to make the product teams into heroes, make it easy for them to deliver all the capabilities and value that, you're trying to, or that they're trying to deliver on behalf of the organization. And so when I, when I think about this concept of paved roads that I always talk about, this is uh, Mount Shasta in the distance for anyone who doesn't recognize it. And you might be thinking, yes, we want to stay on the I-5 and blast past Mount Shasta. And someone else might be thinking, wouldn't it be fun if we climbed up Mount Shasta and skied down it, right? And when your product teams believe that their job is to build software, their job is to expand their understanding of technology and build fun things, then they will not be drawn to the paved road that you are building, no matter how good it is, no matter how many of their problems they solve, because they believe their problems are growing their resume, building cool tools, having fun with technology. If they are truly aligned around delivering value on behalf of the business, they will be screaming at you for more capability in your platform. Why do I have to deal with this piece of technology when you could have solved this for me? Maybe they'll scream quietly at first and politely, but you want that tension that says, I need you to make me better at doing my thing. 
And if you haven't created that environment, if you don't have the accountability in those product teams to deliver value to customers, then the platform team would fail. So I think if you're going, again, if you're going to put executive investment, leadership investment in one area to change one thing in the organization, make sure it's about creating that alignment around what everyone is trying to do, because then you will be able to succeed at solving the real problems of those teams. So if you have all that, now again, it's about building a partnership, building a real relationship between the product teams and the platform team. And again, you have this amazing advantage when you're thinking about product. You don't have to go looking for customers. They're all around you, and they're more than happy to give you feedback. You have to start thinking like a, like a product person to understand how to take that feedback and not just build whatever they said, but understand the problem they're trying to solve and then build it together. Uh, I feel like this is a very common pattern in many organizations where product teams set their goals. We are going to deliver some value for the business. And again, based on mandates, based on requirements, the platform team shows up and says, I love what you've planned for the quarter. I just also need you to implement all of these things that are necessary for us. We need you to put this 17th YAML file in your repo so that we can connect into yet another one of our systems so that, you un so that we can understand what's going on. Again, this is not focused on the goal of the product team. This is the platform team solving the platform team's problems. And the product teams don't care about the platform team's problems. If you can't turn this and frame it into something that the product team is trying to solve for, or honestly, just take it away from them. If there's a real problem that you need solved on behalf of all of your product teams, find a way to make it so that you can do that for them, not so that you're asking them to do something. No love has ever been generated by dropping JIRA tickets or pick your tool of value or favorite on someone else's backlog and saying, also, this is a P0. I need this done immediately. So when I think about what you should be measuring for and what your success looks like, I, I ran into a platform team leader uh, recently. We were having uh, dinner. And he was describing an organization that he had come into and I love the expression that he used, the Kubernetes Death Star, right? I walked into this organization and the platform team was doing exactly what all platform teams do, which is build the Kubernetes Death Star and ask everyone else to understand it and try to use it. And so he asked them to stop doing that and find a way to get 10 thank you notes in the course of the next quarter. I don't care like numbers, Dora metrics, I don't care about any of that. Just have 10 different people say thank you for the work that you do and you know you're on the right path now. Now you're building a relationship of trust, you're building value, you're sharing value with those people, and they're coming to you for help. Because now they say, oh, this is, this is a team that can help me. This is a team that's going to make my life easier. Now they're gonna to come to you with those requests. You don't even have to plan the weekly check-ins. They'll come to you and say, hey, we're struggling with this problem. How could you help us with this problem? Is there a way that we could change the platform? And again, they're software developers, right? Your customers have the ability to do this. So what you can do is get them to contribute to what you're building, right? One of the big challenges that platform teams face is getting started because you're often starting with, you're, you're sort of behind the ball, right? Like something has already been built. Many teams have built, built different things and now you're looking to take some of those things away and turn them into something shared, which is valuable to the organization, but feels like disruption to those teams. So you need to find a way to frame that in a way that's taking problems away from them. And in that case, you're gonna get, again, the thank you note, like, oh, that's some toil that we had to keep pushing on, a thing that we had to keep doing in order to do our job, and now we don't have to do it anymore. And so when you think about it in that framing, again, it's very simple. Like, it's probably not gonna be the metric for every quarter for years, but once you've started to build that relationship, then you should start to see the return on investment, which you will see in your, you know, your Dora metrics, your efficiency metrics, your ability to deliver value to customers, which is ultimately what you're pushing for. And so in that partnership, what you're trying to build, again, is a, a platform team that knows that its job is to accelerate the delivery of value to your end customers, the end customers of your business, and their tool to do that is by understanding the problems and eliminating the problems of the product teams that are trying to deliver. And I think you'll know you've succeeded at this when you become the trusted advisor, right? When everyone says, wow, we have a problem, 
who could we go to to figure out how to get past this? Not that that team's in my way, how do I get around them to deliver the value that I need to deliver, but who could come in and really help us? Who has that deep knowledge and understanding to help us uh, you know, battle our enemies, whatever metaphor you want to choose, to get through this challenge and work together? So to summarize, I think it's time for platform teams to shift from we build stuff and we think it's cool and we're pretty sure people will want it to solving the problems of product teams in a way that allows them to then deliver value to their end customers. And we do that in, in three ways. First, think like a product thinker, right? If you've built a thing and you're sure it's going to be great as soon as people start adopting it, imagine yourself as the PM for your company. If you were building product and you said, yeah, this is great, if only people understood that what we've built is great, I'm sure they would adopt it, you would not have a job because you would not have a company, right? That's not how we can think from a product perspective. So let's bring that into the platform team. So number one, think like a product thinker. Number two, understand or build the environment. So if when you need support, use that to build the environment that aligns your goals so that everyone is focused on solving the problem of your end customer. And then number three, do that through a partnership. Again, you have the easiest access to customers of anybody trying to build a product. They're right next to you. You know them. You spend time with them. You, th you probably worked in one of those teams at one point, right? Many pro platform teams are built out of members of product teams as organizations grow. Think back to what was painful for you, find ways to solve that, build trust, and become that trusted advisor for all of your product teams. That's all I have. Thank you so much for joining.